Hello friends, this video on integrals part 35 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 34. Till now we have understood or we have learned indefinite integrals. Now let's study definite integrals. What are definite integrals? Integrals where we have upper limit and lower limit defined is called definite integrals. You see in this case, I say integral fx dx and then I get the lower limit here and upper limit here. So when you have the lower and upper limit, that kind of integral is called definite integral. Graphically also if you see, for example, you have some function, some curve, which was fx. You want to find the integral from, let's suppose, this is minus 2, minus 1, 1, 2, 3. So if you let's suppose you want to find the integral from minus 2 to 3, that is you want to find this area. This area. Correct. If you want to find this area, this particular area, this guy, this whole thing is nothing but a definite integral where I am saying that this is my function fx. I want to integrate fx dx with respect to obviously x and my value is from minus 2 to 3. So x varies from minus 2 to 3. This is nothing but x varies from minus 2 to 3. So in this case x varies from a to b and this particular area is called the integral area and this area is represented by integral fx dx from a to b. Correct? So we will now take the derivation of how to find the values of this. The logic is very clear just now. Just try to understand. In case of definite integrals, we have the lower limit and upper limit defined. In case of indefinite integral, we have seen that we have some function, we say we integrate. But we don't have the limits, the lower and upper limit. Thus, we can't say that this is the exact area in case of in indefinite integral. But in case of definite integral, we have the limits defined and we can say that my area is this guy. So let's see what the definite integral is. The value is nothing but if you see is nothing but how to calculate the value. Let me tell you. So what you do is let's suppose you have this function. I draw the function here. And let's suppose this is my a. And let's suppose this is my b. Correct? Small b. And if I say fx dx a to b, I mean this area. So you can draw a straight line here. And a straight line here. So I'm interested in this area. Now if I want to find the area of this, what I can do is, since if you see, I can, if I break this guy into small, small rectangles of length this and width h. So let's take one rectangle here of width h and the length is this guy. So this guy is nothing but, do you see this guy? Let's suppose the length is h, this, this, this width is h, this, this width this much is h and this guy, let me draw a better uh, rectangle, right? this looks better now, yeah. So my width is h and what will be the value of this guy, the length? Length will be nothing but f of this point. What is this point? So let's suppose this is some, this is let's suppose my second edge because first edge was somewhere here. This is my second edge, right? Or nth edge, correct? Or kth edge, let's suppose. F of a plus kh. Because let's suppose there are h more, k more h here, right? So this guy will be f of kh, this length. So if I, I have one rectangle here, because so this guy is f of a plus kh, why kh? Because this is a and 
you have k rectangles such k such rectangles from here to here so this is a plus k this point is a plus k right this guy is a plus kh so if this point is a plus kh this length is f of a plus kh and the width is h because we are taking small small rectangles very very thin thin rectangles actually thin rectangles to be more specific and the width of all the rectangles is h so we'll take more rectangles like this for example or more rectangles here right so like this we'll have so many small small rectangles right this have so many rectangles in fact if you see all this area is composed of rectangles only that's how we'll do and the width of all these rectangles will be h and the length will be f of if you see a plus kh where k is variable in this case like the, here the first point in this here k is 0 because the first rectangle so here my length will be uh, f of a plus 0 into h is f of a here will be f of k a plus 1 h f of a plus 2 h like that will go correct so my area will be if you see first guy will be h into f of a this guy second area will be h into f of a plus 1 into h a plus h second guy will be if you take third rectangle f of a plus 2h like that it will go correct till it will go where f of b because this guy is last b point but if you see here the relationship between a and b what that h is nothing but b minus a by n because i am dividing this guy into n n rectangles and n is almost infinite because I am dividing this this whole area into n rectangles or infinite rectangles, right? So my h will be nothing but b minus a by n because the number of rectangles I am meeting is n and this whole length is b minus a, right? So my h will be the width of this will be how much? The this distance that is b minus a by number of rectangles n so that is nothing but the width of this guy so i have this relationship right so with this if you see if you derive my b will be nothing but if you see b will be nothing but uh, n minus 1 h so if you see b will be nothing but uh, a plus h n correct and this is uh, Sorry, we will not take B till, we will take B minus H. Why? Because B is, if you take B, this is the extra area. So, we will take one point just less than B. Right? It is B minus H. And that will be nothing but B minus H will be nothing but if you see A plus HN minus H. That is nothing but A plus N minus 1 H. Correct? So, we will start from F of A and we will go to F of A plus N minus 1 H. And the everything is multiplied by h if you see, right? So we'll take h common. So I'll get this value here. So now in this case, if you take h common, you'll get this kind of expression. h into f a plus a plus h plus a plus 2 h till a plus n minus 1 h. Correct? Now in this case, now if you see h, I can replace with b minus a by n. Why? Because we know that in this case we have h tend to 0 because the rectangles which we have taken has almost 0 width, almost 0 width. So we'll take h tends to 0, but I have two variables h and n. We want to keep only one variable. So we'll say n tends to infinite here, correct? And this is the relation. This is what you get as area of this by crude method. So if I have fx dx, from a to b the value will be nothing but b minus a limit of 1 by n f of a f of a plus h if you add till f of a plus n minus 1 h where n tends to infinite this is my crude way of finding this area this area if you want to find this is the crude way and this is the logical explanation why we have this formula so just learn this formula if i have to find fx dx from a to b there is nothing but b minus a upper limit minus lower limit into limit 1 by n 1 by n into f of a a plus h plus dot 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 a plus n minus h and also one thing to note here is 
the variables are dummy here because in this case now if you say ftdt from a to b or if you say fudu a to b or if you say fxdx a to b all are same all are same so these are dummy variable actually so this doesn't make any sense so that is why they are called dummy variable so let's say thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again